Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome to the divide. The, <clears throat> the divergence. Because we've got the twinning. It came from the workbench 21. It came from the workbench 22. Uh, I can tell you here, standing where I am now, talking to you where you are, that the divergence, the divergence is not complete, but before we might have been like this for wh where we were going to end between how different 21 and 22 were. We might, we, uh, the, the divergence is, is getting much further apart. And that divergence came through necessity. As what we're going to do now is something um, uh, um, amounting to a forensic analysis. But if you're not, well, viewers, that forensic analysis will also include, yeah, um, Ghost Ride. So I know you're saying to yourself, the last time I saw the chassis rails for 21, uh, they still had Dicam Blue on them. And not all the holes were drilled. And you're correct. And we're going to wheel into frame dramatically. And I'm going to talk about what was uh, not the hell dimension, but I definitely spent some time in the nightmare dimension. Because how does the old uh, saying go? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I don't know if I would go as far as that, but I had ideas, I had notions, which were perhaps not as fully fleshed as I thought they were. So here he is, here's 21, the Flanco. Don't fear the Flanco. The Flanco. The Flanco is complete in my estimation Save for, uh, this is not the permanent uh, receiver situation. It's, it's not even attached. I just grabbed a receiver box that was small. All it needs to do is hold a receiver and give me a place to bunch up wires. Uh, was, where, where do we begin? Where, like, like seriously. Okay, let's start with the back and work our way forward. Uh, the, the future recipient of this, the gentleman who won Ratchet and then politely declined to receive Ratchet. And then I told him, well, you're going to get something. This is the mark for where the rear axle line is. It's right in between those two marks. We don't need that anymore. We're committed. There's a mark up here in the front for where the front axle goes, and we don't need that anymore. We're committed as well. So I made a foolish, foolish error during the... Uh, so the day that this was done... Uh, I put about 10 hours in that day, and I finished it this morning just before filming. I, I sussed out the body mounting situation because the gentleman who is receiving it, the gentleman who won Ratchet, he said, is there a way to not do a body mount on the rear? So we, we, we did this. This is an old mount from a stampede. It just bolts through. And the, the this is a U-tron bumper, and the bumper is so stout that I don't I don't think we're going to have any problem mounting that to it. This, it's not, it's suboptimal, you know? This comes out too far, but it's a tube-style bumper. Like, I'm not pleased with that. This was supposed to go in further. But uh, success often comes through compromise. So the only way to get those holes drilled, and what do you know, they line right up with those tubes. They had to be there. They couldn't be any further back, because then otherwise you wouldn't be able to get pins through them, because the pins on this go front tab, which makes them, they're really easy to put in. So I had indeed trimmed this down on the table saw, got everything mounted. And then the most foolish thing that I did was I mounted up the rear axle first. And you should always start at the more difficult end and work towards the easier end. I did not do that. So starting at the rear, I mounted the links and I measured the links out. So everything's mounted in the back and I moved to the front and I start guessing out, guesstimating based on those marks where the axles are going to lie. It is indeed 313. It might be 312. So I, I hit it. <coughs> Got it all lined up. Set the front axle into place. Go to make the bottom links for it. And the bottom links 
are slightly longer. They were about five millimeters longer than the rear links. And I was like, oh no, what have you done? And what I had done is when I drilled the holes, I put the skid too far back. So there are six holes and I needed to move them basically, what is that, about 10 millimeters? About 10 millimeters further forward. So I unbolted everything, moved the entire skid forward, one hole. That's why there's nothing attached to here. That's where or near the lower link would go. And there's a there's a hole. See that? See that hole right there? That's where the skid was. So we moved that skid forward, enables us to use TRX4 lowers from a sport. That worked. Put some axial, I think these are Capra for the top to give me a little uh, control over pinion angle. It's still not perfect because we'll get to how many more things changed before we got to there. And then I started trying to set up the front. And I'm sure you can see a servo right here. And this was supposed to be servo on axle. And if you have done it successfully in your life, then I applaud you. I couldn't do it. I fought for the better part of three hours to get two links to make it so that the front end would actually articulate and not just bind up like crazy. I tried angled rod ends. I tried offset rod ends. I tried high clearance links, straight links. I tried bending my own links. And at a certain point, I finally said, you just, you have to give up. It's not going to work. So I gave up and I said, I've got that Vanquish panard mount lying around here somewhere. It should have been in one of the bins that's just out of frame. The one that says 21 and the one that says 22. And it's not there. I took it out for some reason and now I can't find it. So the whole spacing and the panhard placement on the chassis because the other 22 is intended to be chassis mounted steering and it will be uh it was based around that vanquish panhard mount i lost that panhard mount i can't find it so what i do have are element panhard mounts so there's an element panhard mount so i had to drill more holes and then the panhard mount because it's putting the panhard in a different place it no longer agrees with the servo horn at all. Uh, using a TRX4 front mount, ease right here. This is what was bolted into place. I tried bolting it both directions to see if I can move the servo forward or back. It didn't matter. The, the panhard was going right where the output spline of the servo was because I had other ideas. I don't know what I'm going to do about 22 because 22 is intended to use one of these and I don't have the panhard mount that works with it. The element panhard mount works just fine, but I had to go to a laydown servo. And if you have to go to a laydown servo and you have to select a new panhard mounting position, all new mounting positions, well, you can get your links perfectly parallel. So I designed the laydown mount specifically for this servo with this horn on it. So that horn, how well does it show? There we go. We've got perfectly parallel, the drag link and the tie rod and the panhard are all parallel to one another. These carry the same angle. So bump steer is effectively not eliminated, but really, really minimized. Uh, this makes it to where at full droop, like in here, we're fine. At full droop, the axle swings a little to the driver's side, probably about four millimeters. Uh, I did my usual where I got this thing at what I thought would be ride height, right around here. And I just, I go like this, like we're at 15 sixteenths. And then I just do the same thing on the other side and we'll, we'll do metric on this side. And it's at about 15 sixteenths. So if it's off, it's off by part of a millimeter and both the drag link and the panhard are vintage Traxxas slash four millimeter turnbuckles. So you can just adjust them. I managed to get almost all of the rod ends that are employed to be TRX four. And I even see now that the, the assemblage is still wrong because those are facing the wrong way. And it still has full clearance. Like if those are flipped around, the front end's going to get even smoother. 
So moving the whole skid forward 10 millimeters, and I am not using the positioning plate for the stealth. It's just mounted stock because I had to bend the, I had to make the elbow link here with the big bend. That's the one odd rod end because the, the, the axial rod ends have more angle on them. So that was how I got it to clear the motor and not by a lot. But everything clears, it clears, oh, the drive shaft. The drive shaft to driver's side upper link when four linking a TRX4 axle, I don't know how people get around that. The drive shaft and the axle, the drive shaft and the, the link want to be in the exact same place. So you've got to bend some curly Q links or those zigzag shaped links. And I was like, this curve is bad enough. That curve is where the bump steer that I have, see it move, see a little swing? It's that, that's where it comes from. If there was a way to get a straight link there, uh, and there is, uh, it's called take that motor and put it there, but I didn't want that. I wanted the, like, look, everything is nice and low. We re, I re-soldered the Rhino because I knew it was gonna be right there. I used the tray that I was gonna use for the battery uh, it is mounted, to, I made ABS plates that mount to each side. So this is recessed in here. Four screws, you can just unbolt that. Four screws, you can unbolt this. It it just flips around, it's symmetrical, so you can mount it with your battery wire to the back, battery wire to the front. I tried to get some, some versatility in that in operation. You can also just unbolt the whole thing if you're running a different battery or if you want to put a different tray on. I got to use a vintage pure check strap, which made me very happy. And let me talk for a minute about the shocks. Oh, also the, the bumpers, this one is now cut down too far. I had to cut this because where the bumper originally sat, it was one more hole in and this would hit the tires. In the front, because for whatever reason, this is a TRX4 axle, but we have, we have a tremendous amount of steer angle and it was into the bumper and these fossils would grab the bumper and pull the whole corner down like that. So I just cut it back. You see those Broncos out there that they do that thing where they delete the corners of the front bumper. So I, I ended up doing that. But the shocks. This is the fifth set of shocks that have been tested on here. These are Capra shocks. These are 100 millimeter axials that have been fully gone through. And someone in the comments at a point mentioned putting the Desert Lizard seals in them will remedy most, if not all, of leaking problems. And honestly, I think they might be right. I pulled the clear seals out. I put Desert Lizard seals in, and, like, they're dead silent. And they feel really good. And what I did to myself is I did that thing again, where when I measured out the holes, it's not that the holes are too high. It's that the holes are too far back. My initial intention was to put GTS on here. And then I said I was going to put big bores, 2660s, which I have and they're built and they're already ready. And the GTS are built and they're already ready. And I put them on here and the front end was like all the way down and had no front droop. So what I have accidentally done is basically for the, you could run GTS but you'd have to run GTS in the rear and long arm in the front. This thing needs like 110s in the front because that's a hundred. And as you see, we're in the lowest forward most hole, but bonus, that's an element blue. And I never get to run element blues because 3.4 pounds is too high for everything. It's not too high for this because that shock is leaning way over. And then in the rear, just element grays and the suspension feels fantastic. Like, I, I I, don't know. Props, whoever mentioned it, shout out on putting Desert Lizard seals in axial shocks because they, they feel great. This has now also become a vehicle of the community for the community. Uh, I bought, I for this build, I bought this servo. And these bumpers and the axles. That was all that was bought specifically for the build. 
everything else. These shocks came in on a parts trade. These drive shafts came in on a trade. Uh, the wheels were formerly Diablo's wheels. My buddy bought those. Uh, someone, I did a trade when I was trading out in the ploffering stuff for the motor. That's how I got the motor. Uh, it's, we're, we're running one of the ploffering GT5s that never got claimed to trade for anything. Uh, so, oh, and uh, JP Wirt, follower, uh, channel subscriber and member. This is his designed and made for motor mount, which works which works amazing. I have gone through the Rhino software and tuned the speed control. Uh, it is 90%, I would say, 95% maybe. Uh, oh yeah. So not having anything designed for chassis mounted steering, we then really had to go Dremel to get, to get full lock on that side. I was like, oh, that servo horn clears. And then I put the bumper mount in and was like, oh, no. So, yeah, and in the rear, the, the clearance. Let me get there. Like, we, we trim. We, we trim as we go. We get it to work. Uh, the only real question mark here is, is this, is this going to hold up? A lot of people do it, so it should. And the body bolts on nicely. I like to put the front post in, then drop the rear in. They fit nice and tight because I woodworkered it. The body still fits in the grooves. Let's, you know what? Let's throw some pins on it. We we can discuss this further out in the increased humidity of the outdoors. It is it is ready to ghost ride. Much to my surprise, it turns out that I like the. The, the fitment of the front bumper more than I like the fitment of the back bumper, but we've sort of unintentionally ended up designing this thing around the back bumper. We have a very, very axial-ish mounting solution there. Body tends to pop out of these little grooves because they don't hold very tight. And there it is. I mean, I think I, think I got the tires almost perfectly centered in the wells. That's full compression. So our rub should not be tremendous. We've got, we have more travel in the front than we do in the rear. Uh, flex, what are, we, what are we looking at? Four, between four and four and a quarter uh, for the rest of the world, 100, 105 millimeters. Uh, and then in the front, oh no, yeah. The body has limited front flex to about the same as the rear flex. There it is. I don't know if it's something specific. Oh, yes. The gear reduction. If we've never talked about the gear reduction brought about by attaching a stealth to TRX4 portals, the gear reduction is tremendous. I have not done the math. Uh, I can, though. What's a stealth? 2.4 or is it 2.6? Uh, so, what is it? 20... 28, 52 is the one gear. So 52 divided by 28 is 1.85. And then that's driven by a 20 tooth, which is coming off the spur, which is a 78. So it's 4, 78 divided by 20. No, 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 no. 78 divided by 20 is 3.9 times 1.85 equals 7.21. And we're running a 22 tooth spur. 78 divided by 22 is 3.5. 3.5 times 7.2. So that's 25. That is 25 to 1 when we exit the gearbox. Uh, that can't, that cannot be right, but it can. Oh my, no, that can't be right. I'm, I'm getting a gear wrong. All right, let's just go like this. We'll do this. So 78 divided by 22 is again, 3.5. We'll call the stealth internal. I want to say it's 2.4 to one. So 3.5 times 2.4 is eight to one. That sounds right. 
and then we're just running regular Traxxas 1033s. So we times that by 3.3. That's 27.72. And then the gear reduction of a TRX4 portal is 2.36. Yeah, it's 65 to 1. Yeah, that seems exactly right. Because like I said, a 22 tooth pinion on 3S on a 2250 KV Outrunner and... It is, it is not fast. It has not been driven outdoors. So I don't have any idea what the like open ground speed on this thing is yet. It has not crawled over any obstacle other than right over here is the mathematically flat surface that I use for scaling. And uh, it has, it has crawled up that little lip and it has crawled down onto the other bench and that's it. It hasn't, it hasn't been out of doors yet. These are used tires. Uh, I don't, are they Daphne's? These are Daphne's old tires. These are Daphne's old tires with different, uh, with Canyon customs. So we got softs in the front, mediums in the rear. Uh, the shocks are filled with 40 weight. Is that right? Yeah. 40 weight. 100 mils, 40 weight, 3S, 2250, et cetera, et cetera. I, my hopes my hopes for this ghost ride are higher than others because I just, I don't want it to all have been in vain. I, this ended up in a very different place than, than where we aimed. We, this is that, this is that kid in that meme clip where he falls down at the bowling alley. He's going to throw the ball and he falls down and it goes into the other lane and gets a strike. That's what we're hoping with this. We hope we get a strike in the next lane over because it's not 100% where I thought it would be. Even with that bumper sticking way out, like our approach is still crazy. Uh, our departure is super crazy. Our breakover should be outstanding. Is it high? It's not high enough to get a full radio under. Can we get an Avion under it? We can almost get an Avion under it. Uh, yeah, we're looking at under skid eh, 75 millimeters just under three inches and the links do sit perfectly flat so a lot of things incidentally ended up where i wanted them uh like i say not too happy about that but i don't mind this at all like this looks like something some bro would do to his truck and it should eliminate most issues with the front end. Tire tucks in pretty nice. We'll see how loud it is. We'll see how clangy it is. Uh, I need I need to drive it. I need you to come with me while I drive it because we have to look at that. We got we got to find out how we do. So let's find out how we do. I have no explanation for this as a phenomenon, but this might be the most outrunner this might be the outrunneriest outrunner to ever outrunner it has a real whoop, like we're running off of a jet turbine and i don't know why uh, do we have a stealth paired to trx for axles no we don't this is this is the canyon's first stealth x plus trx4 it's super smooth oh my goodness it's so smooth What's the holdup? What's the frequency, Kenneth? What's the holdup? Are we, are we de-dusting? I'll allow it if we're de-dusting. It just looks like a uh, an overall lack of forward drive. I'm hearing a lot of lug noise. It's not a loss of traction. It's holding. It's just not going. I did not think about the weight. Yeah, there it goes. The inserts, the inserts might be too heavy all the way around. Yeah, the position ability is crazy. Do I have? Oh, it's so like yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say insert because. The maneuverability is nuts. If I just aim it where I want it to go, oh, and if you can, if you can do the back down off of here, 
and not touch the ground, you're doing okay. It feels super smooth. Oh, how about the sidle across? I'm just, I'm not used to this much lug noise out of a fossil. Yeah, the low speed is really nice. It feels so planted, super planted. Oh, I saw, I actually saw the, I saw the receiver hit the ground. It's got a little white on it now. Yeah, look at that, no, no lift on the rear. This rig is not particularly long travel. And as I had said, I, I definitely mentioned this in an earlier episode. I love the look of these tires. These are going to be the wheels, but these tires are not. These tires don't have to be the tire. The tire needs to work above all. We've got plenty of tires to try on here. I think deep woods would look really nice too. Little bumper hang there. Can it pull this front? This, okay. This amount of gear reduction is luxury as luxury. Got really properly wide there. It is so stable. Because I guess what I accidentally did was I built long travel. I built a long travel chassis, but then didn't put a long travel rig on it. So it's just really supple. And that 2250 high KV, high KV is more power, but we're, we're gear, re we're gear reduction, gear reduced. Our gear reduction is a significant 65 to one is like, I gotta say 22 tooth pinion and a 78 tooth spur. That's, that's crazy. Uh, and I could have gone bigger on the pinion, but the speed, the ground speed on the way out, there it is, there's our first one. What are, what are you doing? It's not painted yet. So we, we've got a, a suitably powerful motor, but just with a monstrous amount of gear reduction. The only guy that comes close to this amount of gear reduction is the Tranquish VFD twin with TRX4 axles, but because he is unnecessarily overcomplicated. Uh, he's toting a ton of weight around. I didn't even think to throw this guy on the scale to see where our initial weight was gonna come out. Like, just watch this thing over, this guy, I just hooked the bumper in the fence. I'm, I'm stuck in a chain link fence. I don't know why I'm trying to power out of it. So zero grams of added weight. Yeah, I mean, look, look at this look from the front right there. Now unpainted, no decals, etc. cetera. Uh, my brain goes kind of like a Cherokee. It's got a little Cherokee to it. It's all, well, you know, when we talk about unlicensed bodies, it could be whatever, really. I'm, I'm really liking the lizarded axials. The hundred mil, oh yeah. This guy's gonna break over. I, I feel like the inserts are just too heavy because he's so light. Even dealing with a tire that's not gripping to the degree that I would want it to. And I think that's because the overheart inserts. It's, it feels so close, you know? Like right here, I should be able to pull through this, but I think the rears are not letting it happen. He would need maybe, maybe softs all around, maybe softs all around. So this could still be the tire. But yeah, this, what's really crazy here is that the, the directionality, the, that lateral grip, I can position really accurately, but I, I don't have nearly the amount of grip that I would expect. Like I power through right here, and there's just a point where, and it's right here, 
you just run out of grip. All of a sudden there's no more grip and I'm guessing it's a compliance issue. The tires just aren't complying to the surface. It's the loudest, quietest vehicle. Like it's all engine noise. I'm not really hearing the drivetrain at all. Yeah, right there. He should have more than enough to pull, to pull over that. All right, so the gnats are amazing. I am going to side hill. We're gonna side. Oh, it's, oh, it's so close. I'm gonna take it to the side hill and then I'm gonna run or briskly walk back to the shop and see what I've got. What do I have still mounted from a recent tire test? And we'll, we'll just throw something on here that feels softer. Because the forward drive is not just unremarkable, the forward drive feels pretty bad. Like I feel like I should have way more drive in a lot of situations. But the everything else feels excellent. Drive shaft squeak? Oh yeah, we have not been dry slided. I'm gonna have to drive back in. I'll dry slide the whole guy. Pick out a second set of tires. Yeah, that's definitely drive shaft squeak. How's that front end gonna settle? See, that's that's where you gotta wonder. So that rear is over compressing right there, but not a lot. Yeah, this is tough because stuff like that makes me think the insert in the rear, that medium might be fine, but maybe the tire isn't it. We've got so many to try and he is light. Okay, all right, hold on. We're gonna do one, we're gonna do one more thing before I walk briskly. I'd also like to point out that, that there's virtually no torque twist. There's a tiny little bit of lean. Okay. This is what I wanted to see, how the, how the rear end looked approaching this, which is, you know, really steep. And they are acting overly stiff. Yeah, I'm not getting any deformation in the back. So it's not the tire. It's just, it's just that the inserts are too stiff. This guy must be pretty light. Okay, so. I'm gonna take a quick jog. Uh, I need to weigh it. So we'll get an RTR weight, not a, not, a, not a full weight. I'm just gonna plop it on a scale. I'm gonna grab another set of tires and I'm gonna dry slide it. That was as much for me as it was for you. What was I supposed to tell you when I got back at it? Uh, 6.4 pounds. So like much heavier than I had anticipated. It drives super light like it's it feels planted but there's this like nimbleness which is weird a lot of it is counterintuitive to me uh what do you got there rtr cut and siped canyon trails no just cut i'm sorry no no side cuts they're the ones from the rtr battle they were already pre-mounted they're on oe trexas foams but i wanted to get more of an idea of just forward drive stuff and yeah okay Do you, see, do you see what I'm talking about? We get to a spot and it just won't pull through. There's some drive that we're not getting. Now, as I say that out of my mouth, I am reminded of my own plan here. I wanted to make a vehicle that was more like trail ready, but will also crawl. So when it doesn't, when it doesn't just assault obstacles like I expect, there we got a little lift there, a little bit of lift. How about pulling over here? Uh, you know, obviously I go, oh, well I could have done this or I should have done that. 
But by that same token, oh yeah, that clearance is very excellent. And I thought that we would get some rubbing, but I, there's virtually none. There's virtually none. The rear body mount solution seems to have worked. The suspension and everything about it feels so good. There's just something in the way the rear is driving that feels a little off. And I'm not, I, I don't, I, I can't put my, my finger on it yet. We will see when the waiting, when the actual corner waiting comes back, we will see. But look at look at the suspension. Oh, it's so good. Axials went well. Luckily, I have a whole bin of those seals because uh, Misdirection and the Vanimal are both on. They are on Capra shocks and 10-3 shocks, respectively. And those are getting new seals, and then I won't have to worry about them anymore because these hundreds are fantastic. Look at it. Yep. I wanted to build something to trail that would crawl. And I got there. Yeah, that departure is great. It has excellent approach, departure, and breakover angles. There's just, there's a little hole in the forward drive profile. And I'm not 100% sure what it is. Like right there, we should put, oh, okay. All right. So it's negging. It's about the negging. Uh, I almost said, I'm not sure what's wrong with it. And before I could get wrong with it out, uh, away, away he went. Also, also, I don't know if it's a, if it's a patriarchy thing. I don't know what it is, but like the he, she, what, what, what does a rig define itself as not, and I don't mean in a political sense. I just mean that like there's, when I built Misdirection, there was an energy you know what I mean? The energy of this one is dude. This this thing has a very dude energy. Uh, Flanco is a guy. There's the traction is so cool, and this is just foams. It's we have we have link. Oh, okay, all right. You saw it. I saw it. That was a real. That was a real attitude shift there. I'm gonna check. Oh, there it is. It's getting real, real close. I'm gonna check pinion angles and whatnot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go some, some looking through. It also, perhaps because now the angling shouldn't affect it that much. The rear sometimes feels a little heavy. Like, like on those really steep climbs, the rear feels like it's behaving a little slow. Oh my God. Guys, sit back in your chairs for a second with me. This is a stealth gearbox with no overdrive or underdrive in it. I built the underdrive and overdrive out of it to test tracks as tracks. That's, that's why it feels so different to me. I'm used to that 12%. That 12% is probably it. The, the, the fossils probably would have just worked. This is all zero, zero. These are factory fresh Traxxas axles and an essentially factory fresh Stealth X built with zero. And I think that 12% is, as Jay-Z once said in a song, very necessary man man so i am now kind of unwilling to make big changes until that big change is made so it's going to need to test the, the 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 tracks first and i would like to test the tracks here shortly but at this point okay hold on let me do a thing which is when i went back in there to do the deeds i looked at the board there it is there it almost was. I looked at the boards, there it is. And I said, oh, there's a pair of Tim Tin Inners not being used. And for a moment I did pause and go, how are there only two Tim Tin Inners not in something? 
how did I end up with two extras again? And the six packs have been out of stock on Amazon, so I can't, I can't, I can't replenish. Yeah, it acts. Now that I've had the light bulb about the overdrive thing, the underdrive thing, I feel it now. Yeah, explain, there we go. Yeah, with that no underdrive, no overdrive, you really have to pick a spot to, <laughs> to, 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 to apply that throttle. There's a, there's a weird hole in the mid band that we are going to, we are going to address after we test tracks. But in order to test tracks, I, I feel like we've got to paint it. Still not quite enough. Is it front axle weight? Is that, is that what we're missing? Are we missing front axle weight? Because I'm thinking this fella might be... I was going to say 55-45. I don't, I don't even know if I would go that high on the front weight. 53-47. The weight bias. Now, again... I don't know if that's overdrive underdrive related. It's absolutely planted. It drives, it behaves like the position ability and how nimble it feels overall is much greater than would be told by the 6.4 pounds we're getting off of the scale. And the way, like I say, the way to crush dreams, the dream crusher is to take it to a spot that you know is difficult. I feel like in this configuration, there's a doable line here, but it is so narrow and so reliant on so many things at once. It's like, I'm, I'm only watching passenger rear tire. Let's see if we can get enough bite. I need to, I need to get that lift right there. Almost, almost. Nope, and now we're out of it. There, th we are. We are on a tightrope here. Bumpers hung up. There we go. Position it back. Yeah. When you get past a certain angle, the, the front end gets aggressively light. I think the traction is almost there. Again. I, I need to learn to temper my expectations a little more. Did we did we get a strike on the lane one over? I don't think we did. I think I think we missed the pocket. So Oh come on! There it is. I was gonna say we've got like a uh, like a sleeper. We definitely didn't end up with a split. We've got, for, for those who know bowling, we've got that ring and seven pin. You were a little, like you were a little heavy in the pocket and that pin, uh, for those unaware, uh, the back row goes seven, eight, nine, ten. So the seven is the pin in the corner on the right. And he's doing this right here. We were almost there. We were almost there, but we made so many no pun intended, lane changes to arrive at our destination that I should be ecstatic with the level of performance that we got. This thing feels really good. It drives lighter than it feels, but it also feels super stable. Like until you get to that point where we were getting the nose up and it will just pow, it will just go loose. Portal weights probably solves that, but I don't want to make any substantive changes until the body is painted and we run a test, a quick view on Trax's tracks. Like even right through here, we're gonna squeak through. So planted, oh my goodness. 
it's so good. It feels so good. It genuinely feels so good to drive. Uh, so I want to throw this out here. Um, Erwin Adrianson of Belgium, winner of Ratchet, decliner of Ratchet, seems to be a super laid back dude. And I have an inkling of a notion as to how I want to paint that. But at the same time, I don't know how I want to paint that. So we'll, we'll, we'll put it to Irwin first, as I know he watches the videos all the way to the end. Irwin, do you have a color or a scheme that you would like me to do this? Would you like it to be shiny or would you like it to be patina? Or, and I'm going to throw this option out here because I feel like you're going to be, you're going to choose this. Do we put it to the community? Do we, do we ask the, 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 the folks of the canyon, what, what color should we paint this? My idea is basically, I mean, I'll throw it out here. Why not? It's full disclosure time, uh, is to lean into the flex thing. And I was going to two tone it one color on the bottom, one color on the top. And I was, I was kind of honestly leaning towards patina. So paint on the outside, but I don't know. So I, I leave it to Irwin as to whether or not we go with me, if we go with the, with, with you, uh, what, oh, my hands are dirty. Uh, what are we going to go with? So let me know in the comments or hit me up on Insta or what have you, whatever you want to get to the fastest. And if you want to leave it to the community, we'll, we'll put up a poll uh, where people can list their ideas and we'll go off some basic stuff and, and we'll go from there. I think the, fly, I, I love these wheels on there. I thought the black ones look pretty good, but I really love these on here. They look so good. I love the fossils on here. I would like to just go with this tire insert combo, and that's what's going to stay until we figure out the underdrive, overdrive, the ickiness of that situation. Uh, for its next appearance, it will have, uh, I'll, I'll have done a full waiting, and we'll see if there's any problems there, like if I had something binding up or something. I think it's probably going to need knuckle weights, the big knuckle weights, because it just, it feels really light in the front end, far lighter than I thought it would. But I think structurally and I think layout wise, I think we're really, really close. And that's great. That's a good place to be this early on in a build. We're only at what? Episode three or four. This is the independent. 22 is not in this one. So 22 will get its own uh, appearance once uh, more stuff shows up. That's, that's how we're going to do that one. I think we've covered it. I'd like to thank everyone for watching Dropping by the Canyon. Please do comment below with any questions, comments, or concerns you might have. Uh, drop a like on it, should you feel so inclined. A subscription, never hurt anybody. I invite you, one and all, to do your very best in between now and when we meet again. Have a good one, everybody. We will see you in the next one. Uh, hopefully, we'll look forward to it. I, I want to get this thing painted, so hopefully the poll will be up soon, if that's a thing. Or maybe Erwin will just say, here's, here's my dream, and I'll do that. So we'll, we'll find out together. And, uh, I bid you adieu from the canyon. Uh, come back again soon. Look at that compliance. Look at, look at this thing, look. It's so stable, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous.